Hey, hey guys. guys. We have some really exciting news. So exciting. Super exciting. We are starting a Patreon. Woo woo. And if you don't know what that is, it is a monthly subscription to more of us. Yeah. Because you didn't you don't get enough of us as it is. So <laughs> if you guys enjoy listening to us at all, one bit whatsoever, please take two dollars out of your accounts each month and put it into our bank account. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say put it into our like like what we're what we're doing. Insert it into our <laughs> <laughs> insert it into our creative forces. <laughs> Insert it into our creative crevices. Oh yeah. my god! And th- for that two dollars a month, <laughs> you get two extra crimes. We are only covering crime in these episodes. We've you've spoken and told us that you love the crime portion, and so we've listened and we're making these mini sods, which we are calling the Boda Bonuses because we're gonna just be drinking Boda boxes. Have you ever heard of Boda box? It's boxed wine, but, but it's, it's classy the boxed best wine. boxed wine you'll yeah. ever have. We do have other things going on in our life, and so we really want to keep bringing these episodes to you, and um, we figure that this would be the best way that we could keep making you guys listen to our voices, <laughs> and we just want to hang out with you some more. It means a lot to us. Every dollar counts. It's worth it, because we're worth it. And you're worth it. Come to the dog side. Come, we with have us. cookies and wine. Disclaimer This episode contains graphic descriptions of violence that may be disturbing to some listeners. Please be advised. <laughs> hey guys! <laughs> hey! Hi! I'm Taylor. <laughs> I'm Mandy. I'm Amanda. This is Popcorn Live. Yeah, it is. Welcome. Welcome. Here we are. <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel like it's been a while since we've... It's been a while know. since I uh, haven't... Yeah. yeah, I was there with you too. Yeah. yeah, it has. It's been a while yeah. since I heard that song. Yeah. It was actually a pretty good song though when it came out. Oh, I listened to the shit what out was of that? it. Was that Stained? No. Nickelback? What was that? That wasn't it? Nickelback? No, Creed? I don't think so. No. I think it was Creed. No, it wasn't Creed either. It's stained? Guys. I hate when we do this. <sighs> then I get Stare text messages know, from they're people yelling at us right now. listen to this and they're like, they're like, how are you, you guys so are all stupid? dumb. Because <laughs> we Google everything. We can't do that right now. Stained, guys. Oh, I said stained right. and it's stained. Shit. There was a guy from Stained, like the lead singer guy. Yeah. Um, he With just sent me a message on Instagram, not the real guy, but oh. like one of those <laughs> the fake, fake accounts. Yeah. And it was all about like, I don't know. It was really stupid. And he was like, my ex cheated on me and now I want to be with you. Are you single? Like this whole thing. Oh. And it's like, oh, here's man. my hangout. And you should have like, gone with it. I should have. And you're like, have you not seen my profile well, at all? I don't let anyone know that I'm married. Your name is Mrs. Vikingstad. <laughs> no, that's my blog. My blog is Mrs. Vikingstad. Okay. My name um, is still Amanda, please. Should we open up this bottle of wine while we talk about this? Uh-huh. Yes. Uh-huh. Um, I will say our sponsor today is someone very special to my heart. Um, Duchess. Oh, She's Duchess. like kind of my aunt, but kind of, I think, technically, well, she's not in... Okay, never mind. She's your family. But she is she's not necessarily blood, but she's she's your she's family. She's the best kind. I chose her. Yes. To still yes. be in my life. She's amazing. Um hey, but Duchess. She actually gave us this bottle of wine over Christmas and I'm sad to say that I drank it. What? And so I had to go out and get a new bottle. <laughs> I feel bad, but we've not all been there. That bad. We've all been there. I, I was like in one of those nights. It was like a night where I was just like, I need wine, and then I was like, I'm in sweats, and I don't feel like leaving the house, so I'm not going to go get wine. I'm going to drink this one. I mean, it's not like a bottle from that's so specific. Like, oh, we homemade this, you know? Yeah, that's like, true. I, like that Amanda did we'll that one. Tell you. <laughs> No, she gave me two bottles. I chose to drink oh, the red. Yeah, she did, but. The, 
She mm-hmm, gave us mm-hmm. the white first as our hashtag. Never forget. No, she gave us the white <laughs> for the podcast, and then I was like, "Oh, but I love red," and she was like, "Oh, I'll get you red." And then Mark and I drink it together. Mm-hmm. Go ahead and pop that thing. Mm-hmm. Pop it real it good. It wasn't dun, bad. Dun, dun, dun. Mediocre pop. Um, I have a confession. I have drank every single bottle of wine that anyone has donated to me, and then I have gone out and <laughs> I got replaced the same it. One. That's wonderful. So, <laughs> um, so my mom gave me a bottle of wine because she thought that it was really cute over Christmas, and mm-hmm. she's like, "These, this is for you and the podcast girls." <laughs> and it's not. Here. It's gone. <laughs> it's gone. I actually held out until like last week. Oh man. Yeah, and then I just was fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> so this wine is called Hella Fine. It's not. We are. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. Obviously. Not, it's, it's not the wine right that now. Duchess necessarily gave us, but she's hella fine and we're hella fine. So we got hella fine wine. Thanks, Duchess. Yes. Thank you. You're the, You're the real asked. MVP. And it is by Save Me San Francisco Wine Co. The like the bottle is really cool. It's beautiful. I'm kind of excited. All I'm saying is that that's also a train song. So we should find out if they own this vineyard. <gasps> oh, Hey, y- hey all, Jimmy Stafford here from the band Train, <laughs> located just north of Half Moon Bay near San Francisco. Mavericks is one of the most respected big wave surf areas in the world. Inspired by the awesome location, this full-bodied Merlot has rich chocolate and cherry flavors that pair perfectly with gourmet pizza, grilled burgers, you guys. or a view of the ocean along with the coast. Enjoy. I'm literally making a frozen pizza after this. <laughs> Sounds delicious. Mm. Oh, huh. I, I didn't pizza. even know that it was a train. Sorry. What's with like bands making their own wine? She knew. We got Train. We got Dave Matthews Band. We've got Kicks Brooks. That's it. <laughs> Wait, Kicks Brooks has his own wine? I got married at his vineyard. <laughs> Arrington. We've also been sponsored Wait, by them on this podcast. That's owned by Kicks Brooks. We didn't say that in our thing. I didn't no even one's know ever that. told me. Oh, what up, Kicks? Well, he's one of three owners. Who's the other two? I don't know. People that have money. Oh. But the wine isn't like named after him. He has the Kicks Brooks cab. <laughs> God, <laughs> shit. Well, but we've never had mouth. it. Well, at least yeah. I know it because I did get married there. Yeah. So if I didn't know it, then we'd and you have guys an go issue. there all too the time. often. Yes. Yeah. And we're friends oh. with a lot of people that work there. If I lived closer, I would. I like that. Me too. It's great. It's like it not like grapes. Yeah, it's not too acidic, and it's smooth. it's more like a dark berry to me. Like yeah, less grapey, more berry. I don't normally like Merlots because I oh, feel like really they're easy. like more uh, bitter, bitter aftertaste, yeah. and this one is smoother than I yeah. was expecting it to be. I like it. Love, it's not bad. love. Yeah, it's All hella right. fine. Hella it's fine. Hella fine. I love wine. that name. It's so good. We should bring back hella. That should be a thing again. I think I say hella still. Do you? I also say holla. Holla. I do say holla. I said holla when you got here today, Amanda. Oh. Oh, no. I said hola. (laughs) (laughs) Just kidding. I might take that out. Aloha. (laughs) Aloha. Oh, wait. No, I said. (laughs) Oh, shit. I said hollow. Hollow. (laughs) Oh, my God. All right. Let's just get into crime. It's what the people want. Yeah, give them what they want. We're getting Let them real eat cake. Ooh, cake does sound good. <laughs> <laughs> but it kind of does transition into my crime story because cake? it has to do with eating. Oh no, this is not good. So I'm not entirely sure if I'm saying this guy's name correctly, but it's set in Japan. Oh, you might have heard this case. It's probably one of the more um, well-known ones that I've done. Okay, you're going to have to give us more. It is of Issei Sagawa. Okay. Born April 26th, 1949. (gasps) So close to mine. Sagawa, um, who is also called Peng sometimes, he was a Japanese man who had very wealthy family. His parents were super well off uh and apparently he had his first cannibalistic thought in the first grade 
Okay. That went sour real fast. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like cake, 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 cannibals. <laughs> In the first grade. Um, should that be a shirt? Cake, 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 cake cannibals. cannibals. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> that might be the best shirt we've come I up with actually, yet. Actually, I think that that's fantastic and we should do it. Okay. But to get back to the story, Sagawa had his first cannibalistic thought in the first grade. He saw a boy classmate's thigh and he Ugh. thought to himself, hmm, how delicious does that look? crazy okay so he was always really short and skinny and he had pencil like legs and he blames western culture for their representation of women like grace kelly was his um actress of choice because obviously this is back in you know the 50s and she's gorgeous Mm -hmm. that too um but he blames western culture for sparking his cannibalistic desires through um, portraying these women these women so sexually and instead of dreaming of you know doing them like the normal teenage boy he dreamt of eating them at age 23 we'll skip ahead a bit because nothing really happens in between Sagawa followed a tall German woman to her house and he broke into her apartment at night and while she was sleeping he like crept up next to her and he wanted to bite her and the woman woke up, and as he tried to, like, you know, put his mouth around her legs, she pushed him to the ground. And the police ended up capturing him, and they ended up charging him with attempted rape. Because they didn't know that he was... Right. No one really knew that he was trying to yeah. eat her. Um, and he did not confess to his intentions. So he got away with that and didn't serve too much time. And it turns out in 1977... When he's 27, just a couple of years later, he moves to France and he got himself a PhD in literature Shoot. at Sar... I don't know if I'm saying this right. This is French. Sarbonne. Sarbonne. That sounds not French. That was really good. Sarbonne. That yeah, sounds that better. Sounds that sounds better. Uh, but it was in Paris. And so he went to study literature. Uh, he said... While in Paris, this is a quote, almost every night, oh wait, this is not a quote, why am I the worst? I'm sorry. It's been a while. It's been a while. (laughs) (laughs) So he said, while in Paris, almost every night, he would bring home a prostitute. And each time he would go to kill her, and for some reason, his fingers would freeze up on the trigger. He was going to shoot them. And literally, he said every single night, which is insane to me that you have enough money to pay for a prostitute every night of the week. Right? What is he doing? <sighs> oh, he's a, he's he's a, a PhD. Doctor. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, I guess he's got wealthy parents. But how much prostitutes are expensive, right? But this well, is also back in the fifties where they had cheap ex- in Paris. Prostitutes. Well, yeah, in Paris there probably are cheap prostitutes. No I offense would have to, to look at Paris. It. <laughs> um. <laughs> Which brings us to June 11th, 1981, the day in question. Uh, Sagawa, then 32, ended up inviting his Sarbon, Sar- Sar- Sarbon classmate, the beautiful Dutch Renee Hartveld, to dinner at his apartment. And he told her that they were going to translate poetry for a school assignment. Um, he obviously was planning to kill her and eat her. He chose Hartvelt because she was healthy and beautiful, and those were all characteristics that he didn't see in himself because he thought of himself as short and skinny, and he was literally only 4'9", so he was a very small man. Oh, that's like almost Um, a midget. Midget, yes. Or a little person. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Little person? He's a little person. I'm not sure. Little people, big world. Mm -hmm. How tall are you? Is it like 4'5"? To be a little person, I, I almost don't think know. it might be like four, yeah, Google it. mid to late fours. <laughs> <laughs> this wine really is very good. It is good. I think it's weird because it really I under know five ten, or four ten. Oh, under so he was ten. technically. Wow. Although I guess maybe in Japanese culture that's not so strange. Oh yeah, I feel like they are tinier people. Yeah, they are smaller for sure. But this woman, she was five ten. So, so I can imagine, yeah, being like 
as someone who is, I feel like I'm kind of a tall woman. You are. If I were like two or three inches taller, even, going to a small Japanese man's home who has a PhD in literature and yeah. like seems quiet and nice, I wouldn't feel... You know, not threatened at all. Threatened, yeah. No. No, okay. that's correct. So, he invites her over to translate poetry. And he said in an interview later that he wanted to absorb her energy. So, like I said, he kind of like chose her because she was the opposite of what he thought he was. Did he think eating her would uh, he, he would, would absorb, absorb her okay. energy? All right. Do you know what I just realized? What? Taylor does a lot of cannibalistic um, Listen, stories. the last two cannibalistic we had a couple stories of them, has Each been of us Mandy. Had a, yeah. So, because mm. you did the tea cake one, yeah, you I did, did the Albert tea Fish cake one, but you okay. did Albert <laughs> Fish. That that yeah, that outdoes so, all of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I was just like, because when you said that absorb energies, and I feel like the lady that made people into tea cakes mm-hmm. did it to like to not to have protect, her children. Yeah, dead. like yeah. she did it for like a reason. So, what was her name? Ooh. It was a weird one. It was. She was fr- Italian. From Italy. She was a gypsy. I had the guy that made people into hot dogs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we do a lot of this cannibalistic stuff, yeah, but it's because it's, it's, it's we're fascinated by yeah. it because it's never something that we would do. Or would we? <laughs> oh, God. Help. <laughs> Help. I'm just kidding. It's not Help. a good joke. It's not. So, yeah. she arrived. They started reading poetry, and then he shot her in the back of the neck with a Ooh. rifle. So he finally... In the neck? How did she not notice that? She was turned away from him, oh. reading from something when he did it. So Sagawa said that after he shot her, he fainted, and he ended up waking up frantic, half wanting to like call the police or, uh, or uh, an ambulance, and then he realized he had been waiting for this for 32 years. So why not take advantage of the fact that she's just laying over there? And so he proceeded to engage in necrophilia. Ugh. And um, then he went and bought a butcher knife. He didn't buy a butcher knife before she came over. He but bought he a butcher th- knife. He didn't believe in himself after well, he, she Yeah, came I over. mean, he'd be... He'd, He'd been doing this for how long where he just would stand there with a gun? And not actually yeah. do it. Yeah. So he got a butcher knife and he ate her for the next two days. Oh, God. This is a quote directly from him. Um, the first thing I did was cut into her buttock. But no matter how deep I cut, all I saw was the fat beneath the skin. It looked like corn and it took a while to actually reach the red meat. The moment I saw the meat i tore a chunk off with my fingers and threw it into my mouth oh. it was it was truly a historical moment for me historical that's what he said he said it looked like corn yeah isn't that weird when i read that i was like i have to write this down because it's horrifying but also isn't that it's weird it's like he he like literally saw it as a dinner plate mm. i had to get through the corn to, to get, get to, to the, the meat, meat. Oh, that I'm is... having a hard time with this. Keep going. Drink some more wine. <clears throat> Drink the wine. Okay, so he also said, what I truly wished was to eat her living flesh. Nobody believes me, but my ultimate intention was to eat her, not kill her. Although he shot her in the back of the neck with a rifle, so it doesn't really make that much sense. How do you that eat much someone sense? without killing them first? Well, I guess we've... Yeah, I mean, like, people lose legs, so he could chop off a leg, and yeah. then she could, you know. Was that on The Walking Dead? I'm sure that that was definitely on The Walking Dead. No, but, like, when they, those crazy hillbillies captured a couple of them. And, and then they, they were, were like, trying to eat them. They were, like, taking chunks off their thighs. Ugh. Do you not remember that? I don't remember that, that like but only because two or three, right? was a long-ass oh. time ago. I remember when that was, but I don't remember exactly what that was <laughs> <laughs> well when they when they finally reached the end of that train yeah they're um, all track yeah, yeah. And they're all kidding. yeah anyway. that was no good so no after two days of eating uh sagawa realized that he needed to dispose of the body because it would obviously start to smell and people might take notice and you know he kind of ate and froze what he wanted of her 
So the rest of her he put in two rolly suitcases. And he took a cab to, I'm about to butcher this park's name, Boy de Boulogne Park. Perfect. I think, I think that's what it Yeah, is. let's go with that. Yeah. yeah. So it apparently had a very secluded lake. So he had planned on just throwing these rolly bags into the lake. And um, while he was on his way, people noticed that blood was spilling from the bags. And so they called the French police. And the police picked him up. And he confessed immediately, saying, I killed her to eat her flesh. And Sagawa then awaited trial in France. His wealthy wealthy father got him a lawyer, and after two years in prison awaiting trial, he was deemed unfit for trial and legally insane. They deported him back to Japan to spend the rest of his life in a mental institution. But, get this, because the charge in France had been dropped and sealed, Japanese authorities had no charges against him, and they declared him sane with a creepy sexual perversion. He checked himself out August 12th, 1986. Oh my god. Today, Sagawa walks free on the streets of Tokyo as a somewhat celebrity. People, like, know his name. They, like know what he did and he has a bunch of books out and that people have him come talk at like is he dead now no he's still alive and there are a couple documentaries about him here's another quote that he said after being caught the desire to eat people becomes so intense around june when women start wearing less and showing more skin just today i saw a girl with a really nice derriere on my derriere he said derriere um, on my walk to the train station. When I see things like that, I think about wanting to eat someone again before I die. Oh, he said that out loud after he checked himself out of the mental institution. He also said this. What I'm saying is I can't bear the thought of leaving this life without ever tasting that derriere that I saw this morning or her thighs. I want to eat I want to eat them again while I, gosh, sorry. I want to eat them again while I'm alive so that I can at least be satisfied when I die. He's published 20 books. The most recent one is called Extremely Intimate Fantasies of Beautiful Girls. And he also has a book about his murder and a couple documentaries. And I think he like, he, yeah, he walks the streets today just doing his own thing. After he ate that girl. Well, I am not going to Tokyo anytime soon. <laughs> I really want to really go to... creepy looking dude, too. I just got to wait till he kicks the bucket. I really want to go to Disney Tokyo. Well, yeah, if he was born in... I doubt he goes to Disney, But I say though, 49 right? or 40... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> 40 The something. fact that he's just hanging out like a normal yeah, man talking about eating books. people still, like... How is nothing happening? He's like almost 70, so he probably still has a couple more years to go. Japanese people live forever. Yeah. Yeah, sure. they're like when we did all of those like oh, longest yeah, the living oldest people, people in the yeah. world. Yeah, there were a lot of There Japanese were a lot of people. people. Um I just don't get like how he can say I want to eat someone again and nobody do anything and about it. And he was it. convicted. Well, it's a well, very yeah, it's a he wasn't convicted because he never went to trial. They just they said he was insane, insane and they sent him but to then Japan. He checked himself out after he checked they himself decided out. he was actually sane. He was just had a terrible fetish. Perversion. Yeah. And that's how he describes it as a fetish. He says that he doesn't want to kill anybody. He just wants to eat some people. <laughs> Did you see that one there was a Craigslist ad or something of a guy that wanted to be eaten? Oh gosh, no. Yeah. That should be another thing, but there wasn't, there's not a whole lot on it. It's literally just a guy that he posted an ad on Craigslist saying that he wanted to be eaten. There was multiple people that took it. Like that be on the keto Because his fetish, his like, his (laughs) fantasy, I mean, was he wanted to picture himself as um, the bowel movement of the woman that eats him. That's really gross. Are you fucking kidding? I'm not joking. 
Um, that turned him on. Oh, yeah. Would that be the on the keto diet? No. Shut up. Would it not, though? I think it would. High fat <laughs> and meat, low carbs. We're not having this conversation. I can't even talk about that. <laughs> I will faint Amanda, right anyone now. who's listening right now, Amanda is on the keto diet. And so she's been talking about it all the time. Why not talk, talk more now? Because I don't want to talk about eating a human. <laughs> I'm good with my salmon, thanks. Oh, salmon sounds so good. <laughs> Is that what you've been eating lately? Yeah, Just I eat salmon. a lot of salmon. You can't eat, mm. like, pasta and bread and shit on that, though. Yeah, but I eat, like, salmon with zoodles. What about veggie noodles? Because they That's are technically... Zoodles. Oh. Z- like but I zucchini noodles. noodles. I I'm talking them. about not full veggie, but, you know, those noodles... I love them. They're, they're like, not actually veggie noodles, though, and but they're they still have, super high in carbs. Yeah, they're carbs, but there's like th- you get like s- specific amounts of servings of vegetables in them. Yeah, that still doesn't go with the diet of low carbs. They're lower than normal noodles. Do you know that a cup of rice? <laughs> I don't want to know. Forty grams of carbs in it. Did you know that I don't actually care about any of that? <laughs> Most of the well, time. Well, y'all are bringing it up. So actually, I'm I was. No, about I just it. don't actually count any of that stuff. Which I was at a dinner party that said the keto is should. very um, bad for your body. And everybody's going to say that everything's bad for your body. I think that if you stick on keto forever, it's not yeah. good for your body. But um, for they're, they've also time. proven that humans only need natural fats and protein with limited carbs because that's what our ancestors used to eat so our bodies are meant to digest that where our bodies aren't meant to digest sugar and um all of the yeah, added bring, things uh, that we put in grains into it after until after we figured out what to do with wheat yeah exactly which was later on which that's why it's harder it on like our bodies medieval Mm-hmm. Yeah, so the like I like it because it makes me feel good. I am not going to do it forever. Well, that's really all it's but, about. Yeah, yeah I mean, true. any diet that we've ever done, we do it to make us feel better. You like, did like Whole Thirty and stuff. Yeah, you yeah. Hard I order. love yeah, Whole Thirty. Were... We've talked about doing Whole Thirty again next month, actually, just to do a cleanse. But um, we've After tried keto to stay... or during keto. I would probably stick to keto and Whole30. Oh, Mark would probably add in some sweet potatoes because he misses them. Oh, yeah. Oh, I do love sweet potatoes. Or, sweet he doesn't potatoes actually miss good. them. Nathan's just eating, but, you know, MREs and shit. I know. He's going to be like, wow, He's just so sucks. sad. They have, like, entire conversations what in the barracks. What is A meal ready oh. to eat. Yeah. Oh. They're not that bad. They're the ones in the bags and yeah. stuff. My grandpa um, made me eat them when I was a kid. Well, I had he to brought eat a bunch a lot home, worse. and I tried, I tried like probably ten things that he brought home once, and you didn't like it. Well, well I mean, like it's food. Yeah, I mean, if you could it's eat just, something else, you would. Is it like but... lean cuisine or like you know? No, they're in a bag. Meals. It's literally like you can eat it cold. Oh no! And like they open it and you eat it, and it's like, like spaghetti what? and meatballs. No, and eggs. You can't eat cold spaghetti and yep. meatballs. Yep. Haven't you ever eaten a cold can of Chef Boyardee? No. Never? Never, ever, ever, and I never will. You know what I miss? What? The little, the, the... SpaghettiOs? SpaghettiOs with meatballs. Mm. I they like don't the make SpaghettiOs with I just hot them. dogs. No. As gross as that sounds. I used to, yeah. Did you guys used to put hot dogs in your macaroni and cheese? Yeah, sometimes. Okay. All the time. Okay. My mom would make boiled hot dogs and put them in our macaroni Ooh. and cheese. Uh, yeah. Same. Have you guys ever boiled hot dogs with spaghetti stuck from both sides and it looks like little that. sea creatures? So I tried to do that one time. It didn't actually stay in the hot dogs and it was like just this weird. Because I did it while I was babysitting one time because I was like, this is going to be so cool. Pinterest. It didn't you got to stick them in all yeah. the way through. Oh, um, Maybe that's what I did wrong. Or else they'll slip out. That's what yeah. she said. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> we are so off topic. Are All right. Not? So what do you guys have? Not really. Yeah. Us? So, okay. So Mandy and I decided to do this topic like a month and a half ago. Yeah. And then we haven't talked about it since. And, and then we're like, today we were like, hey, are we still doing that thing we talked about? And we both said yes, so we're both also interested to see if we chose the right and topic. And then we were both like... Um, we never really okayed or double checked. <laughs> so either we did research the same thing or we didn't. So and, let's. Um, um, I feel 
little like queasy right now after that. I'm really I feel sorry. Weirdly nauseous. Say it into your mic. <laughs> I didn't want to say that right now that I'm nauseous. You're nauseous because I just talked about a that cannibal was, yeah. who like loves eating human it's flesh. Just weird. Don't keep it's talking. Okay. About it's okay. It's She's talk- nauseous. <laughs> Don't keep saying like. I'm nauseous. Oh, yeah, are disgusting. you nauseous? Do you want me to remind you of <laughs> why you're nauseous? Her buttocks. <laughs> she thought it looked like corn. <laughs> I like God. that you say buttocks. <laughs> Oh, I think it's because of Forrest Gump. Buttocks. Something came up and bit me right on the buttocks. <laughs> <laughs> you want to see? See, everything yeah. comes back around. We were just talking about MREs so, and Forrest Gump. So what Amanda and I, I think, decided to talk about was New Year's resolutions. Yes. Okay. And like fads. Yeah. Okay. Like That's good then because I didn't, I actually went more in depth with like the actual thought of like a new year's resolution new year resolution yeah i um, did both okay cool i'm so glad yeah, yeah. We're on the same same page. Page. like oh that's kind of similar to what we're talking about and i was like is it <laughs> <laughs> what are we talking about <laughs> all right do you want to go first i want to see what you have to say and then i'll like just come up with it um, <laughs> well according Wait, to- real quick first <laughs> did anyone in this room make a new year's resolution no. so i did kind of yeah i decided that i'm going to be more invested in my passions yeah because Ooh. sometimes i put them to the side and then i'm like now nah, i'll get to that but now i'm like i'm gonna do this shit yeah it's good i always pick a word um what do you mean so what i do is um I've been doing it for the past three years. Last year, my word was growth, and I feel like I kind of took that to an extreme um, because I, like, started a podcast. I quit my job, started my own business, mm-hmm. got married, did a few other things. So I was like, man, let's you just slow You almost don't that. even yeah. need yeah. a resolution to have a 19. You did well, it for two years. So what I do is I pick a word of intent. And so um, this year, my word is um, is – uh, discipline and so what I mean by that is that I come up with the, all these ideas and all these goals and I have a lot of growth and I do all this stuff but I don't actually sit down to like develop that or like or there's a lot of times where I do laundry and I'm like oh I should probably fold my laundry but then I'm like oh, I'm gonna do this instead and my intent with discipline is when I think about it I should do it or it's never going to get done Mm -hmm. and so I'm trying to be more disciplined with myself and the reason that I choose one word to work on all year round is that I have 365 days to put discipline into something um instead of just like they say what it takes six is that true that it takes 60 days of doing something to for it to become a habit habit? Mm -hmm. it's 21 days is it only 21 21 Mm -hmm. oh shit yeah cool now you can go into what you were going to say. Because I figured you were going to go into statistics. I haven't made a New Year's resolution since they made us do that in, um, like, middle school. Oh, really? Yeah. I just, I think in high school I pretended, like, to make one, but I just never did. Huh. They just never were appealing to me. I don't know I, why. I always made them and then never stuck to them. <laughs> I'm big on, on goals, so I've always made them, but not, like... I don't know. I'll get into it later if Mandy doesn't cover it. Um, According to the U.S. News and World Report, 80% of New Year resolutions fail by February. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Um, I saw um, that uh, I have a statistic that says that um, less than 25% of people actually stay committed to their resolutions after 30 days. And then only 8% accomplish them. Mm-hmm. Um, we went to the gym January, I think it was January 2nd, and it was full. Yeah. We, we've never seen it look like that. And there were so many people. And now it's died down again. Yeah. There's probably like a fourth of the people. I guess, okay. I started Orange Theory, which if nobody knows what that is, it's just like an interval training gym where they just tell you what to do the whole time because I need that kind of structure in a workout. Um. I did sign up back in November, and so I was already started by the end of November. But I guess that's, like, part of it is sticking to it. 
and I wanted to, I um gained like about 30 pounds of stress weight since, you know, Nathan left and my husband, and in case anybody listening didn't know that. Um, <laughs> so I decided that I was sick of that. Um, so really it was just kind of about getting back to my normal, but um, I actually really love it. I adore Orange Theory and I've never stuck to a workout routine like this. Have you seen a difference in the amount of people that are in the classes from the beginning of this month and the end of this month? Um, yes, but also it's hard to tell because it, it opened back. Like when I started going, that's when it opened. Oh, okay. So I was one of like the first people. So I got like a founder's rate and everything. So I was one of the first people at this one because they just opened a new location. So it's kind of hard to, because all these people are actually just coming yeah. because it's there now but and also- not just... It's probably more expensive than the normal like it is. gyms yeah. around. So people who pay for it feel like, okay, I've got to go or else I'm losing money. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. I actually haven't to gone to the gym all year yet because I knew that they'd be too busy and I don't like it whenever it's busy. So yeah. I've just been doing stuff at home. Um, Still counts. Yeah, yeah. But like I personally like don't like when it gets so busy yeah the first but i do want i get really excited when i see all those people there because i want everyone to succeed yeah like i would love to go to the gym if it was always busy like that but i'm not used to it being that busy i like going whenever Mm -hmm. there's no one there's no one yeah um just be more it's not even the gym itself it's the parking situation. Yeah, it does <laughs> like suck. I get so angry just parking that I'm already angry by walking into the gym, and See, I don't need to be angry walking into the gym. That's how I feel about the movie theater. Yeah, the movie mm-hmm. theater's awful. The less people, the better. The better yeah. I'd rather just be me in yeah. in a theater. I agree. Except for scary movies, I like for there to be a lot of people in there because then like people make noises and they laugh or something happens, and then I don't get as scared. So, I don't no. see scary movies in the theater. I don't. That's because. probably the best way to do it, though. Yeah, but for me, I'm just so noise noise oriented that any little thing bothers me, and to the point that I'm not even watching the movie. And so many scary movies are quiet for so long that I can hear all of the noises happening mm-hmm. in the room, and then mm-hmm. I just want to kill everyone. <laughs> um, so I can't do that. Like a quiet place. I get that. Fuck that. <laughs> I didn't. Yeah, I did not see that in theaters. I didn't either. But I did mm. see it at home, and it was fantastic it was for all good. those who haven't seen it yet. Way better than Bird Box, dumb. I didn't, yeah. I didn't hate Bird Box, though, so there's that. They were both, like, a post-apocalyptic world, you know, with different crazy things happening. There was yeah. a meme that I saw that said, Monsters. hey, let me copy your homework. And they were like, okay, but just change it a little so that they don't know. And, and that's Box. what I felt Bird, <laughs> Bird Box <laughs> was of A Quiet Place. <laughs> it's like the same thing, but they change it just a little. Okay, um, here are a couple of the top New Year resolutions, according to a survey of 2,000 people. Diet or eating healthier was number one. Um, exercise more. Lose weight, which I feel like all kind of go they in the same all, thing. They're all three the same exact thing, And then much. save more and spend less money. Mm. Learning a new skill or hobby. Quit smoking. That's good. And then a couple other ones, but those are the bigger ones. Yeah. I feel like for the most part, resolutions are like, I want to lose weight and look better and be more pretty. Yeah. And it's all very like, I guess the healthy part is better. I like it when someone's like, I'd, I'd rather be healthy. Like I'm looking to get healthy. But pe- some people are like, I want to lose all the weight in the I world. I just want to lose five and pounds. I just <laughs> want to be like a fashion model. What's that? It's Mean Girls. Yeah. I just want to lose three pounds. That's all. Oh, and then I'm just going to say like, a couple more things and then you no, can just you're totally fine. also can i just tell everyone that the reason that i do all these different diets are because we like to feel healthy not because well also because i want to lose like five pounds <laughs> but, <laughs> or but there's a difference pounds. between those people who are like i just need i need to lose this weight to feel okay with like right. anyone else looking at me like i can't look in the mirror anymore and i'm like you know well, so most of those things like have a deeper meaning like mark and i watch my 600 pound life all the time i love that show so good um and like most of the people that are super heavy and are like i hate myself it's not because they're fat it's because they have other like 
mental issues. issues. Yeah. 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 And then once they get to that, then they can be like, oh, I can start loving myself. And I think that if you truly love yourself, then you'll want to take care of yourself and be healthy. Yeah. Not be like a specific weight, but just be healthy. I think yeah. that's really important. But there are those girls who are, are already, you know who I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah who but- are like, you know, whatever. And then they're like, starve themselves and it, that's but, not but about that's health that's they, about well that's what i'm saying they have other way. issues that they need to work on right is what i'm saying yeah i love food too much <laughs> could never be anorexic yeah or bulimic because i'm afraid of throwing up i think i have a fear of throwing up that's a real thing is it mm-hmm. to be actually be afraid of it yeah because i like yeah. panic there's like yeah there's so many things, all the phobias. That's a, that's a different topic for another day. Actually, th- we should do that. We should. Phobias. Oh, yes. uh, phobias. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. So back to New Year resolutions. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they actually started with religious origins. Um, the Babylonians made promises to their gods at the start of each year that they would return borrowed objects and pay their debts. The Romans began each year by making promises to the god Janus, where January came from. For whom the month of January is named, which I just said because I didn't <laughs> read ahead. And then last thing, did you know, guess who the first country is to celebrate the new year? New Zealand. Australia. It's close. Australia? Samoa. No. Oh, Samoa. But it's close. To, uh, they mention Auckland. Yeah. When I was over there. Is the first fireworks. I was in the future. Yeah. I was like, hey, living guys. In it. Happy New Year. I'm already here. <laughs> Where you be? Where, <laughs> Where you, you at? <laughs> you guys are still in yesterday. <laughs> yeah, last year. <laughs> but it was close, so we got to give a little shout out to New Zealand. Wow. And Samoa. Um, yeah, so that's kind of some of the bigger things. Okay, cool. So tell us about some fad um, diets. Well, first, fads. I did have um, one thing that I wanted to say. Um, no. So... <laughs> I was saying earlier about how I am really big on setting goals and um, the reason why people don't get through their resolutions are because they like don't make the right types of resolutions. Um, They make resolution. The wrong resolutions are for three main reasons. Um, It's a resolution created based on what someone else or society is telling you to change. Mm. Um, it's too vague or you don't have a realistic plan for achieving a resolution. Um, and so, and that makes a lot of sense to yeah. me. Um, because if you could be like, oh, well, I just want to get healthy. But then you don't actually do anything to make yourself healthy. you're like, healthy. I wish I had a Ferrari. But then you don't go to work ec- any extra hours and you're like, I can't afford this. How yeah. do I make my resolution come yeah. yeah. true? Um, so... What um, the New York Times tells you to be um, like what to do to make your resolutions. So if any of you out there have made resolutions and you're still working towards them or you want to start now and make a resolution um, because it's never too late. I think that you can always make goals. It doesn't have to be at January 1st. It can be August 22nd. but like either January 1st or August 22nd. Yeah, not any of the other dates <laughs> in the year. Um, okay, so the number one, you need to be specific. Your resolution should be absolutely clear. Um, making a concrete goal is really important. Rather than just vaguely saying, I want to lose weight, you want to have a goal. How much weight do you want to lose at what time interval? Um, so say, like, I want to lose five pounds in the next two months, that's achievable Mm -hmm. absolutely um and it's if you make something that's a well hold on i'll get to that so (laughs) measurable um this may seem obvious if your goal is a fitness or weight loss related one but it's also important if you're trying to cut back on something too um so if you want to quit biting your nails take pictures of your nails over time so you can track your progress on how your nails grow back smart that is very smart um or like log in uh like notes on your phone or something if you're trying to do certain things um so you want to be specific you want it to be measurable um 
You want it to be achievable. This doesn't mean that you can't have big stretch goals, but trying to take a big step too fast can leave you frustrated. So what they say um, is like make smaller goals to to achieve your big goal. Mm -hmm. Um, So for an example, if you want to save enough money to retire in five years when you're 30 years old is probably not realistic, but saving an extra hundred dollars a month may be. Um, and if it's that easy, then you can be like, Oh, well actually I'm going to save an extra $200 a month or three. Like just don't make it too easy, but like start low and then go higher. You want it to be relevant. Um, is this a goal that really matters to you? And are you making it for the right reasons? If you do it out of the sense of self-hate or remorse or a strong passion in that moment, it doesn't usually last long. But if you build up a process where you're thinking harder about what's good for you, you're changing the structure of your life. You're bringing people into your life who will reinforce that resolution. Um, and then like you could have more of a chance of succeeding. Um, And the last thing is you want it to be time bound. Um, So similar to achievable, the timeline toward reaching your goal should be realistic too. That means giving yourself enough time to do it with lots of smaller intermediate goals set up along the way. Focus on these small wins. You can make gradual progress. Um, If you're building a habit, you're planning for the next decade, not for the next couple of months. Um, So I really liked that just to like kind Mm -hmm. of – break it down for those of us that like to have big goals another thing that i read too was that um you should tell people close to you so they can hold it. you accountable yeah. well not only that but like also like support you in it yeah. like you know not just be like hey have you done this yet yeah. how much but weight have you be lost but you. been like yeah, yeah hey i know that it sucks but just remember why you're doing it because if you make a resolution in your head and you're like i'm gonna lose 10 pounds but then you don't tell anybody. You do like vocalize and then it. It's kind of like, well, did I did I make that resolution? I don't remember. Like two yeah. months like, down the road, you're like, uh, did right. maybe I didn't. Maybe or I'm do you just, just change do it or something if yeah. you don't like it. And another one was to write like it down. I was yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah. I feel like nothing is real until you either write it down or say it out loud yeah. because you're always gonna question yourself or like it makes it more real to say that out loud or to it's write like, it down. Every night, I'm like, I'm going to wake up when Sam goes to work at 6 a.m. And I'm going to get things done in the two hours between then and when I have to go to work. And then he'll wake up to go and he'll leave. And I'll be like, at night, I'm like, tell me, like, make me get up. Make me get up with you. And then every morning, he goes to leave and he's like, are you going to stay in bed? And I was like, yeah, I don't know what I was talking about. I'm definitely sleeping still. (laughs) Like, that's crazy. (laughs) That's too much. So I will never be that person that wakes up with Mark. No. Because I've tried to do that. (laughs) Absolutely And I've been trying to do that for months. I'm like, I could do so much in the mornings if I just woke up with him. (laughs) Um, But I, when I was reading a long time ago and I read Girl, Wash Your Face, she said that the one, um, like, if you lie to yourself then you'll never be able to succeed in anything so if you if you like set goals and you don't ever achieve them then you're just lying like how are you going to be able to succeed in anything else if you can't even like keep a promise that you make to yourself yeah so i stopped making unrealistic (laughs) promises to myself like getting about waking up at 5 30 with mark yeah and so now i'm like okay i'll wake up at 7 30 which normally I would yeah. never wake up at 7. Th- and like I used to wake up at like 8.30 or 9. And so now I'm waking up an hour earlier. Yeah. And even if I'm like not really doing anything, I'm still like slowly getting up earlier. And then I start doing more things yeah. during the day. And like I've noticed that if I'm not because I try to do that and I'm like, I'm going to wake up with him. No. no. But now I'm waking up at 7.30 and having no problem, which maybe next like maybe in a couple months I'll be like, oh, I can wake up at 6.30. Yeah. And like then you can slowly get to that point where you're like work because I want to yeah. work on stuff in the mornings before That's I go like to work. That's my life, except mine. I used to wake up at like noon and now I wake up at like <laughs> 9 30 10 10 30 it depends yeah, but i mean it's a big feat yeah yeah Dukes i feel good sleep. i wake up and i'm like dukes can sleep it's 10 i it's 9 45 it's before the double digits i made it you know like so, i'm not it. gonna lie to all of you listeners when taylor and sam got together taylor would text us earlier than noon 
or we'd be one like, oh or my god, three in the afternoon. <laughs> She's up. and I was like, what? She's awake. <laughs> Somebody stole Dragon and Roland. <laughs> like I, it took me a long time to get used to it, and now she'll text us in the morning, and I'm like, yep. Oh, this is a normal thing. This is the like, thing this now is, that this she is, does. <laughs> this is how life works now. Actually, I wake up the latest out of all of you. Well, you don't have I to wake go to work until like, later, too. Yeah, yeah I don't true. go to work till 12. Yeah, when I used to go to work at noon, I would wake up at 10, and I'd be like, yeah. oh, I have so much time. <laughs> and I'd have to leave my house at 11, so it's like I had like an, just hour. an hour. <laughs> I wake up at 8.30 to leave the house at 8.45 to get to work at 9. <laughs> I can't live by that. I, I need like an hour to acclimate myself to the day. I still take my yeah. hour to acclimate to the day. It's just partly at, at work, work. <laughs> I, can't. I can't by the time i get to work everything's mm. already crazy i need espresso all of those though. moms out there are listening to us and they're so jealous <laughs> right now they're like dang it i wish that i could sleep until 8 30 i wake up every two hours to feed my baby <laughs> um okay yeah, yeah so i wanted to just kind of talk about fads real quick um so since the number one reasons why people like make resolutions are for working out and mm -hmm. eating Wait, better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so Mandy just joined Orange Theory. Mm -hmm. and that's a big thing. Um, and can you like just say, I know you said that it's like where they tell you what to do, but can you it's, like explain it for a yeah, second? Yeah. It's actually one of the big reasons that I like it is that all of the stations are assigned. So you get like assigned a rower and a treadmill that is the same number. And um, like the rowers, the water rowers, that's like, you know, yeah. whatever. If you don't know what that is, just Google it. Um, so half the class starts on the rowers and that includes the weight room. And then there's also like free weight stuff or like, you know, resistance training and all this stuff. And then half the class starts on treadmills and then we flip flop halfway through the class. And sometimes that varies, obviously, the uh, the um the workouts vary every day, but it's all, uh, everybody wears heart rate monitors um, and that's kind of how they have figured out if you keep your heart rate in a certain level, you burn more fat or you, you know, burn more calories without doing damage to your heart and like all this mm -hmm. stuff. And they do so. it in colors and so you want to stay in the orange. Oh. Orange and red burn. Yeah, you get the most splat points, which is. Is you, that orange theory? Yeah. Why? Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Splat, and it is a splat logo. It's a splat logo. Interesting. So um, splat points means that your body is, the higher the splat points, the the longer your body is burning calories even after you're done working out. So uh -huh. you can burn, you can keep, like your body will still burn, you know, energy. What I think is really cool about it is that even though the workouts are different every day, no matter where you are in the U.S., if you go to an Orange Theory, mm -hmm. like say that Mandy went to one here and then like, someone went to one up in wisconsin they would be doing the exact same workout on the yeah. same day and i think that's really cool because i have a lot of family and friends that don't live here that i can't work out with so it'd be cool to call them and be like be oh, like, oh what do you think about the workout yeah. yeah oh god and they um, just did like benchmark workouts which is basically like they do it once a year and they measure <laughs> they clocked my mile run mm -hmm. which was just laughable <laughs> it was terrible i am not a runner and like all these people are good at running that's why i don't judge myself next to these you know everybody's yeah. just different and i'm definitely a weightlifter <laughs> <laughs> um i used to hate the mile oh me too it was the worst i'm not gonna tell but, you my um <laughs> no i am it was like 13 minutes <laughs> that's not I don't think terrible that that's as terrible. like the no. way you were making it sound yeah no was good. Well, some of these people were running like six and seven minute miles and i was like yeah well that's yeah, like well, okay. you, that's like peak performance so if you only doubled that then good for you yeah like tripling that that would be like mm. and even that as long as you finished the mile you finished yeah. yeah you're good you did it i died a little bit um there's uh there's all these different workout places that are popping up in nashville and i think it'd be really cool for us to go to each one and do like a, and do free like a blog yeah Wait, can you do well i'm gonna do that in my places? blog yeah most of them have like one your free first class. Oh. class is free so like you guys could come to orange theory or you could just pretend you're someone else every time and go they to them know. multiple times they can definitely tell <laughs> but i think that it would the master of disguise over <laughs> <Yeah>. here 
turtle, turtle, turtle. turtle. I remember the story. I, I once pretended I was a French exchange student. I can just pretend I'm from somewhere else. I just changed the color of my hair so I could or like just... that fake Australian girl on the Bachelor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know. But, she pretended to have an Australian accent. The sad thing is this is the second time that... <laughs> you talked about this we've today. We've talked about this today. But you weren't with us earlier, Mandy. But Taylor and I did talk about that exact same thing. Well, and I'll that's just go really fuck myself. <laughs> no. That's what's sad to me is that we've talked about the exact same person on The Bachelor twice today. Oh, that's and I don't even made, watch the show. It, it made such an impact on us. Man. <laughs> Yeah, that's what it is. Anyway, okay, so we're going to go. This is a new thing. I'm also going to talk about it on my blog because I've already decided that I wanted to do this. Uh, will you plug but, your blog real quick? What uh, is it yeah. called? It's called Mrs. Vikingstad. It's mrsvikingstad.com if you want to go and read it. Love. Nice. Hi. Um, but I want to do that. So we should totally do that. And then we can also talk about it on the podcast. So, um, because I want to try a bar class. I want to try like. Which, oh, yeah, pure if, bar. Yeah. And like we'll talk about all of those. But I knew that Mandy is doing Orange Theory, so that's why I wanted her to plug that. Uh, also, if um, Orange Theory, if you want to sponsor us, <laughs> uh, we'll totally come and yeah. join for free and talk about you all the time. Um, but we'll change I, our name to Orange Theory Crime and Wine. No, no, we won't. <laughs> for the right price, we oh, yes. would. Yes, we definitely <laughs> would. If we could all work on there for free, for and and money and money, free and to money. change the name of the podcast, I think we would yeah, need money. Definitely, <laughs> give us all your money. Okay, so <laughs> I'm just gonna go over a couple of the um, fad diets right now. So keto, I am doing keto mm. right now. I really enjoy it currently. I'll let you know how it goes. I'm only on week three, so can't give you too much information. Um, I'm in the middle of week three. But I did almost, like, uh, murder my husband in the first week, so that was pretty terrible. But he, in his defense, he almost murdered you, too. Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah. Because he was super... So, like, for those of you that don't know, with keto, you cut carbs. Um, I'm trying to do less than 25 carbs a day. He's doing less than 50. Um, and then you do a high-fat and, like, high-protein... Um, diet and so i'm eating a lot of cheese and <laughs> that makes me happy and but like you also have no sugar are there not carbs and cheese no oh my gosh well certain cheese has carbs but the cheese that we get there are no carbs i still can't eat it i love cheese i still me too. shouldn't eat it um that was the one thing that i missed on whole 30 and i did whole 30 so whole 30 is where you cut out you only eat whole foods for 30 days and it's an elimination diet and then you slowly reintroduce certain things to see if you have any adverse reactions. See, that would be the reason that I'd want to do that because Just I know see. that I have a couple things that bother me, but I I can never like pinpoint if it's, you know, like beer. I just can't drink much beer anymore. If I have yeah. more than one, I get sick. Not th like throw up sick, but like my insides hurt. So, yeah. you know, I'm like, is that, but is that gluten? You know, is that the wheat? Is that uh, something yeah. else? The hops? Uh, yeah, you know, like, so anyway, that, that'd be a reason that I'd want to do it. I really liked it. And we learned a lot. And it's, we try to buy all of our food that has less than five ingredients now. Um, especially if we know what the ingredients are. But we cut out sugar over a year ago and, um... Like, every once in a while, we'll have a little sugar. I mean, I'm drinking wine right now. There's sugar in wine, but it's mm -hmm. natural sugar. Um, I try and stick with the wines that only have natural sugar and not added sugar. Um, but the first week of keto, like, totally killed us because Mark was super, like, irrationally <laughs> angry. And <laughs> I was super emotional. And we, like, just didn't talk for a week. And then we got past it and we're like, oh, yeah, we're so good. Miss this you, great. Babe. Yeah. Hey, how you doing? I missed you this last week of avoiding you. Um, but South Beach diet is a big thing right now. Oh, yeah. Um, there's the three-phase program that focuses on whole foods. Um, and But I have a statistic really quick and then we'll let you guys go. Um, but Chuck is on um, the surf and turf diet from From. Okay, can I really quickly... It's grain-free. ...just tell you that two days ago, I analyzed the term surf and turf and realized 
that it means it is seafood. in the water yeah. and on land yeah, because of the term turf. Yep. Yeah. You Just did not like, know that until... I never really thought about it. Okay. I'm not saying that I didn't know that. So when you I know saw what turf is, but like I was, someone was talking to me and they were like, oh, surf and turf. And like, I've always known that it's like steak and lobster, you know, like I knew you that what it was, know. but like I never thought about the, the term surf and turf and mm. I thought that it was genius. This is Amanda's corner for this episode. Last episode, it was Baltimore. <laughs> this episode, it's surf and turf. <laughs> We learn something new every day. I wonder uh, what it'll Amanda be next does. week. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> uh, I'm really smart, I promise. <laughs> I am really um, smart. Okay, I'm so, so smart. the most popular choice of diets right now, 31.1% is a low-carb diet. Boom. Um, 23.5% <laughs> say they would do a reduced calorie diet. 19.3% are keto um the atkins diet that's still how around. is that still a thing that guy died yeah from doing the atkins diet it's bad well, he also died from heart disease but they say that um from sugar doing... is the number one heart disease not number one killer of like reason for i can't speak the number one reason for heart disease is sugar and atkins doesn't cut out sugar so they think that that's why he died not because of the meat um but 9.2 percent say they're interested in trying the atkins diet in 2019 um 16.8 percent are interested in weight watchers that's still a thing um 15.1 percent are interested in going on a low-fat diet, eating lean protein, fruits, vegetables, and grains, while avoiding full-fat dairy and meat products. 15.1% um, said that they are interested in becoming vegetarian. Oh, where's paleo in all this? It's not in any of these. Oh. Vegan. But I can talk about paleo, too. Um, to. Vegans... About 5% of respondents said that they wanted to become vegan. 15.1% um, of people said that they would like to cut out or eat less meat in 2019. Um, this is one that I've heard of recently, the Fast 5-2 diet. Have you guys heard of that? No. No. It's a form of intermittent fasting, which is a big thing right now. Oh, God. Um, but participants eat normally for <laughs> any <laughs> space right now. Oh, my God. She's mean mugging over there. <laughs> Sorry. I feel like I've I been intermittent, hide my intermittent fasting and I looked over and Mandy's face was <laughs> so, so angry. Good. So Stupid. with this, participants eat normally for five days a week and drastically lower their calorie intake for the other two days. 6.7 people are interested in that. 6.7 people can go live in a um, closet. 5.9% are interested in going gluten-free. Um, which which is doesn't super matter low. unless you have celiac disease. <laughs> Everybody, your body will not process the flowers or wheat or gluten any differently. I just want to say that because I'm annoyed by it. Actually, that's false. I have sensitivity and I learned that from doing Whole30 and I get a headache from eating gluten. I also still eat gluten because I don't care about a headache, but um, you can find out what your sensitivity is by doing Whole30. That's fair. Um, but I'm not going to stop eating But pizza people who think that bagels. it's healthier. Oh, yeah. No, to that's have like. Yeah sorghum flour mm -hmm. or you know rice flour or something yeah. and it's just like, it's like the people just... that like make cauliflower into potatoes it's not the Ooh. same or the the pizza made out of cauliflower yeah i'm probably gonna do I'd that, that actually, try it, actually. Yeah. that tastes delicious um yeah, paleo like diet eliminates cultivated grains and livestock encouraging participants to eat foods that their ancestors could have hunted or gathered 4.2 of respondents express interest in going on this diet um, Whole30, about 5% said that they were interested in Whole30. I will tell you that it is one of the hardest things that I have ever done in my life. Um, and last but not least, 4.2% of respondents said they are interested in trying the Mediterranean diet. Ooh, Recent studies suggest festive. this may be the best option for maintaining a healthy body and brain. What? We should totally go on this. 
Is it just like chickpeas and like and it fish? It emphasizes rice? healthy fats, vegetables, and proteins while lowering the amounts of processed foods. So it's basically what I'm doing with keto. Except with rice? Yeah, I guess so. Let's just remind everybody, though, that you do what's best for you. I, I There's like, not a one size fits all to any of this. And yeah, that's why we like, keep trying different things to see like what our body's like. I didn't hear in there the moderation diet, which is probably my biggest issue. I just need to eat less of the things that I'm eating. Yeah, no, I have oh, an issue 9. with that. 9.2% of people said that they would just try a different diet. Oh, yeah. But the I moderation diet. That. I just created what it's called. The moderation diet. We're gonna probably, hashtag moderation diet. Hashtag moderation diet. We did it first hashtag here. Hashtag pop crime and wine. Pop crime and wine created this diet. But I'll, yeah, my mom, I one of my moms. Like that's actually already. But it's not thing. called the moderation diet. It's just eating in moderation. My mom says it everything it in moderation, everything in life in moderation. Except for the cake. No. Eat all the cake. <laughs> I love that we just brought it all the way back around. <laughs> yeah, this has been a good episode. Thank See? you again, Sorry. Duchess. Thank you, for Duchess. Yes. Promoting this episode. And by promoting, I mean sponsoring. Hello, fine. It's so You're good. You're the best. Yeah. This has been um, a learned experience. Yes. So yes. thanks for hanging out with us. And we'll see you guys. Um... No, don't say that. No, she didn't mean to say that. Oh, I was like, <laughs> we'll see you guys. Um, oh, no, no, we're going to. No, I was going to say in another two weeks. Two weeks. Oh, yeah. yeah. Is what two I was going to oh, say. Except for yeah, our Patreon. So if you've heard our most recent little clip that we put out, um, it is telling you that we are starting a Patreon. So sadly, this free episode is only going to be happening every other week now. Um, so if you missed that, we're letting you know now. Yeah, now you Hopefully know. Hopefully you don't skip through the the end portion and like miss this miss entirely this. crucial detail. You'll yeah. see it. You'll yeah. see You'll it on the miss us next week unless you're giving us two dollars. Yeah, you should totally become a Patreon supporter and then you get us next week too. Yeah, go check our uh, go check <laughs> our go check our Patreon. Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> Go check, go check out the video because I think that we're really funny. We should put up um, bloopers soon because they're I think good. pretty much the most of our recording experience was us just laughing. So yeah, we're, we're really f- bad at things sometimes. I'm so <laughs> awkward too. That's why we're really good at a podcast and not doing videos. Uh, I'll just put that out there. Absolutely, I hundred percent agree. Yep. So, All right, guys. Yeah, we'll see All you right. guys. Uh, Stop saying us. that. Why? Because see you next Tuesday is our tagline. You can't say see you guys. See you next Tuesday. See you guys later. Sorry. (laughs) I just wanted to say it. I just want to say see you. Uh, Why don't you guys follow us on Instagram and Facebook and all the places at Pop Crime and Wine. Yeah. And email us. And buy our t-shirts. We will. See see you next Tuesday. Oh, see you next Tuesday. Hey, I'll see ya. <laughs>